Welcome into the Atlanta Football Party. Coming up on today's show, can Mike Bobo keep this up? This is Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it's time for the Atlanta Football Party. Only on Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Atlanta Football Party. I am your host, Jarvis Davis. I got my main man, Brent Rollins, sitting right next to me. You can follow him on Twitter at Brent Rollins, PhD. You can follow myself on Twitter at Jarvis D90. Folks, yeah, this episode of the Atlanta Football Party is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. The Atlanta Football Party is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day coming up later in the show Brent and i will call this georgia defense to the witness stand and we'll wrap things up by giving Brent his flowers for calling that lad love it connection but first we have to talk about the matchup this matchup brent leading up to the uh against the florida gators most of the talk was centered around what this offense would look like without brock bowers the bulldogs absolutely spanked the gators 43 to 20 making this the third year in a row that the dogs have beaten Florida by 20 plus points. My question to you is, Brent, is this a situation where we can expect Mike Bobo's offense to continue to play this way? I think so. I mean, your quarterback's playing at a high, really high level, very accurate with the ball, good decision making, not turning the ball over. We talked about this sort of lad love connection and them getting more of the production target share with Bowers' absence. Like the look, and like we also talked about, the look of the offense wasn't going to be that much different. And it wasn't. It was a little more 11, three receiver personnel, a little less two tight end personnel. Uh, But outside of that, the look was pretty much the same. It's just now how do you distribute those targets? I think Ladd and Lovett had 12 targets combined. The others, you know, so there's some threes and a couple twos. So, yeah, those guys are going to be there. And as long as those stay healthy, as long as uh, Ladd's back uh, is – a okay, uh, then yeah, I think this is what it's going to look like. Yeah, I thought Lad was was the interesting piece in this game because when you think about you know what he was able to do, what he had uh, six catches for 135 yards, one touchdown, and the thing that I feel like is going to get Lad McConkey to some giving him some heavy consideration for the NFL that next le- that next level is those yak yards, man. He had 78 of his of that 135. Or yak yards. And we're talking about being able to, I think that's a two part thing, right? It's how the quarterback gets you the football, right? Because if he has to go up and get it, a contested catch and all that stuff, you know, you're not going to get it. You don't have that opportunity. But the way Carson Beck was putting that football on him for him to be able to run after the catch, I think that, you know, that's the type of thing that gets scouts' attention. And I really feel like, I'm not saying he's going to replace Brock Bowers, but I'm saying this guy can be the guy that. And, and and we shouldn't even be surprised at this, right? Because we saw this last year. You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> so been that think, way since he's been on the field. Like, absolutely. Absolutely. He's a, and I, he's a top 75 player. Like, I think yeah. he's, as long as the medicals are fine and he's got no issue there, like, he's got the quickness and the, with which he plays, the, like, the NFL now is built for players like him. Right. Uh, they can right. just win instantly at the line of scrimmage. And you, you saw him even on the, the catch that wasn't a yak catch, but it was the one closer to the end zone on that early drive. Like he cooked mm-hmm. Marshall instantly off the snap. Oh, man. And that oh, guy's man. a you know six one, two hundred pound corner who was a big time recruit. So right. he's got ability for days. Not deceptive speed. Don't throw that word out there. He's no, got, no. He's got. He's a legit <laughs> fast, super yes. quick player. Yes. Uh, so yeah, he, he's he's all that and and more. I think and now it's just about him staying healthy. And I think the bye week was obviously huge for him. Yeah, and and I, I want to go back to what you were talking about as far as the uh, this back issues, right, and the injuries that you know, that that take him, took him out for the first four games of the season, and obviously the last four games we starting to see him get progressively better. And I think that you know when you think about the back, man, it's so many things, so many ways that 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 injury can go because you can be right one minute and then the next minute you can say, oh man, my back is going on. I don't know what happened. I threw it out or whatever. But I really I thought it was very interesting when Kirby Smart said, hey, we have a regimen that, you know, on, on Monday and Tuesday and how it happens on Wednesday, all of those things. I just love the fact that guys are getting this type of care, this type of regimen at this early of an age, because 
this is what they're going to experience when they go to the NFL. And I, and I really feel like whatever that regimen is that Kirby Smart has uh, uh, conjured up for, for a lad, they need to keep on doing it. <laughs> yes. And they know how important he is. I think right. that's like you just see how important he is to the offense. And think about, you know, hey, you, you if you live in a world where you get through this, not necessarily gauntlet, but you get through this stretch and then you get Bowers back with a healthy lad, now you're talking about some some big time uh, playmakers, even even more addition to that uh, fire offensively. I want to talk about another playmaker. How about this Carson Beck? So you know, I was just looking at some numbers. I know you're a big time numbers guy over there, big dog over there, at PFF man. I know how you get down. So I look, start digging into the numbers, and I come to find out that uh, <clears throat> Carson Beck is ranked nationally in passing yards, yards per attempt, and completion percentage, top ten. Should we start having a conversation for the quarterback who is in the number one team overall in the country and, you know, is ranked as this high and one of the high scoring offenses as well? Should we start having the conversation about him being considered for the Heisman? I mean, I I think you can definitely have the conversation. I mean, Mm -hmm. there's guys that just numbers right now just Trump is like Jaden Daniels is already at 3000 scrimmage yards and 30 touchdowns like he's he's playing on another level. But obviously, if you lose those games, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an individual award. But that, I think the way I think I would describe this is, you know, the bouncer has now pulled back the, the, the rope and is allowed yeah. back into the club. Like he's yeah. now in the club of those Fair. that you can talk Fair. about and, you know, be on a list or, you know, be on a top 10 kind of thing or a consideration. He's in the club. Now, does he get in the VIP lounge? That, that's that's. I think the next three weeks are going to, if, if he goes and, you know, is big time and making big time sort of highlight plays and whatnot in these next three games, then we might be talking about him in the VIP lounge and needing a seat at the table come, come early December. And, and the fun, I love that you use that analogy because I used to be a bouncer, right? I used to be do security at the clubs back in the day. So I understand what you're saying. Like, like I feel like Carson Beck is right at the rope. I feel like he's standing right there like, hey, man, let me in. I promise you, I ain't going to cause no trouble. I just want to be I just want to be in the mix. Right. Like and I think that that's Carson Beck right now, especially when you're talking about coming up against Missouri, you know, Tennessee you know, Ole Miss and all these big time games. And then obviously the SEC championship, if everything works out for Georgia, I like I think you almost have to put him in the conversation because this offense is. As far as from an explosive play standpoint, they're playing better than they were last year. I mean, if he just maintains and then they yeah. stay winning games, he will mm-hmm. be – I think he will be one of the finalists. Absolutely. I, I told the whole heart. Not necessarily a winner, and, but one of the finalists. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because to be honest with you, I mean, outside of Stetson Bennett, I mean, a lot of people didn't really take him seriously from a quarterback prospect standpoint, but – a lot of guys are starting to take Carson Beck a little seriously. If you're talking about him having the consistent play that they've had, like having one of the top ten offenses in the in the in the country, you know, leading that leading the way with it, I think you almost have to be in New York, at least get an invite to New York, um, or at the end of the day, um, at some point. But but coming up next, like I said, we're gonna call this defense to the witness stand because. There's something that I saw, Brent, that I feel like we have to talk about. A <laughs> yeah, it was a little different this week against the Florida Gators down there in Jacksonville. But but first, I want to let you guys know that this episode of Atlanta Football Party is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is an app that you need to go check out, guys, because guess what? They are the place that you need to go to for last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. Also, there's the easiest way. This is the easiest way to f- buy tickets to every kind of event that you can possibly think of. What well, I'm talking about, where to be concerts, obviously games, theaters, because you know me, guys, I'm the type of guy that I don't like to plan that much. I know my wife get on me about that all the time, but I like to get good deals in order to get good deals you can go get this last minute stuff because that's what i'm on i'm on i promise you i'm on that i'm trying to get these these exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football basketball baseball concerts comedy theater and much much more so guys i need y'all to take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account 
and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Not only they got the best deals, and they'll give you twenty dollars off. All you gotta use is the code Locked On College. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, a guarantee. And folks, this was by far, my opinion, in my opinion, Brent, Georgia's best game defensively. The Bulldogs had a season high four sacks. And this is the type of game I've been waiting for to, you know, to see from this defense because I've been calling out Michael Williams all year, Jamon Dumas Johnson. I even called him out as well. I'm just calling out everybody on, on the defense this year. But but the way they played, though, it hit a little different, like you mentioned before, before we took our break. And given Kirby's high standard for this side of the football, do you think they've reached that third straight natty level type of play? No, I, I don't. I, I mean, I re- and the reason I say that is mainly because Florida's still very limited offensively in terms of Indeed. if you look at just sheer players, they had one that was on the level of what they were playing against. And that was Trey Wilson, who's a freshman, true freshman. So right. depth of talent there at Florida, like Pearsall is a good player, but it's just, it's not what is there. I, th- I think Napier helped them out a little bit. Like the first 10 plays, they were they had nine yards of play. And then they ran the little trick reverse play with to Pearsall that put them behind, you know, they got stopped and put them behind the chains. The fourth and one call, obviously, that you know gave Georgia the ball in there in in Florida territory. Like so Georgia, or Florida actually helped them out a lot. But like you said, after that, Florida completely sort of inept in terms of running the ball for the most part. Uh, there was only a few plays here and there where actually Florida had any kind of uh, things working until le- much later uh, in the game, and that's that's what's the difference in Georgia's. They have they have the ability to get to a gear, at least for in spots that no one else has, and yep. we saw that in that little stretch where you know Florida went like 16 straight plays and had negative yardage over a 16 play period, and it went from a seven to three game to a 26 to seven game. Instantly. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm necessarily there. I'm with you. Um, I don't know if I'm necessarily there yet, because, but I, I think that when you look at what Florida did in, in that first drive, I literally was looking at this offense and I was just like, they were literally throwing everything at, at Georgia. They, they came into this game, said, hey, we're going to be aggressive. We're going to come up with this loop to do play. And I, because you got motions going on, people motioning this way, coming back this way. And I'm saying like, man, when you think about what teams have to go through in order to just throw Georgia off in order to be able to move the football, that's a lot. That's a lot. And I think that, you know, this was a good test for them initially. Um, like I said, Billy Napier, uh, I said, I uh, t-, t and I were calling, um, uh, Billy Napier after the game on the Locked on Georgia Bulldogs postcast, I was calling him Big Balls uh, Billy, <laughs> you know, because I'm just like, why would you go for it on fourth down? Like, you got some good, decent momentum. You scored on the first drive, and then you come out here and go for it in your own territory, and you basically say, you know what? We just going just gonna, to just, just gonna just, here we go. Like, well, what was right, amazing about it is he, I think he thought he had pocket kings. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. you, you get to the end and Kirby had pocket aces. Like, hey, you did the extra time uh, with uh, with the quarter. Like, you could see in the way Georgia lined up and the way Georgia played that play specifically. It's like, hey, if they get it here and they get it running, fine. But let's not give up a home run. And right. you saw the discipline with which every guy on the back uh, end of the defense played that play. That's yeah. That's coaching. That's – in between the quarter, right before the quarter starts, he's like, "Hey, they're going for it. Let's not give up the home run. They get it. They get the little half yard. Fine, we'll go play defense." And like I said, Kirby, you know, he put it in the double key in you know, pair of kings, and then Kirby said, oh, "I got pair of aces." Yeah, no doubt. And, and, and that's the that's the beauty of this defense. That's why I feel like Kirby Smart's like standard for this defense is so high because these guys are so disciplined. That because they give these guys, they throw everything at these guys at leading up to get from a game preparation standpoint. And you see Smell Monday was just right there. Like, where are you going? <laughs> like, here, it's, let me go they, ahead. They, they've <laughs> you know? created the ultimate team defense in college right. football. And it's mm-hmm. and I've said this for a couple of years now, but the things that coaches these little tiny details in terms of eye discipline, how you step, 
you know, staying home if you're the backside edge, like all these little things that coaches care about to the nth degree, they do well and really yes. well, and they do them consistently. Other schools don't. It's There's a difference. Yeah, it, it's a huge difference. And you kind of see what, you know, Kirby was able to pick up when he was with a guy like Nick Saban because Nick Saban is the exact same way. Those guys are just – you can't fool them like they believe what they feel and not necessarily what they see because you know like they they stick they stick to the rules like and that's the that's the beauty of a, of a disciplined defense like you could throw all these motions and different types of right route combinations at, at them and, and all they're going to do is just say you know what my rule tells me or coach smart told me if i see this this is what I do. And if I see that, that's what I do. And here's how I counter that when I'm in this particular situation, whether it be third down or, or uh, down and distance. Down and distance is going to determine whether or not what I'm going to be able to do in those particular situations. So it's just, I just absolutely love what I'm seeing from this defense because those guys are so well, so, so well coached. I will say this is a great question to save for next week, though, because yes. they play like that this week. My answer will likely be different next week. Yes, because we know guys like Luther Burton are chomping at the bit to go up against the Georgia Bulldogs. We'll talk about that matchup next, but I kind of want to jump into this this particular situation. I, I think that, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I called out a couple of guys that I felt like needed to step up for this defense. You know, like Michael Williams, Jamon Dumas Johnson. Is there a guy that really just stood out to you in this game and you said, okay, this can be the guy to kind of help this team get to that, this this unit get to the next level? Uh, Tyrion Ingram Dawkins. Uh, he, yeah, he wasn't, he's, been, he's been hurt. Good he's call. been dealing with a foot issue. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really like, oh, now he's playing. It wasn't really a guy that was asked about during the bye week because you've heard some, about so many others. But he only played nine snaps. And then one of those, and just win consistently on those nine snaps, and also forces a fumble on uh, on Mertz on the second and nineteen with the pressure. That's that to me is a massive game changer for this defense because that limits other snaps of players that to me are just there. They're not yeah. impact players; they're just guys. Fair. And, and so if he can get into that fifteen to twenty snap range and up that a little bit as we go forth. It's him now on early downs, on first and second down. You actually have two edge guys that can potentially get pressure instead of zero. And, and like he adds a different element to that defense uh, that you don't, you haven't really had over the first uh, portion of the season, depending upon who you have in the game. So he, he was the one for me. Yeah, man, that, that's a good pull because when you think about the impact with those limited snaps that you're just talking about, you're talking about less than 10 snaps and you're able to get a sack, strip fumble and everybody's like, okay, who is this dude? Where has he been? <laughs> and, and those are the type of the things that it goes back to what Kirby Smart talked about when he called out Dan Mullen about and then when he picked Florida to be George and said, hey, man, you don't like recruiting, though, you know, so – Kirby Smart loves recruiting. <laughs> yeah, those guys, and then, you know, like Jalen Walker is another who, in limited so snaps, explosive man. Oh, but gosh. we've seen him rush the passer on third down like that. We've right. seen him be effective as a pass rusher on third down. You haven't seen Ingram, uh, Ingram Dawkins, especially on first and second down. Uh, but yes, Jalen Walker has a speed rush to no end and use it until they stop it. Yeah, and those and I and I even like the fact that like when you have guys like that coming into the play. Um, I like when I saw Michael Williams when he ended up getting the sack. They had him lined up over the guard. I was like, oh, I was like, okay. Michael got a little power too. So it just makes you so versatile when, when you're talking about the combination of guys that you can use when it's time to rush the passer. I just feel like, yeah, they haven't made it there yet. They haven't made it to that, that three natty level uh, just yet, but man, they look like they're on their way. And we, we're talking about, you know, coming up next about who, the dogs going up against the Missouri Tigers and whether or not they can get there if they show themselves or prove themselves like they did against Florida. But first, I've got to let you know this episode of the Atlanta Football Party is brought to you by FanDuel. Folks, listen up. Jarvis Davis here for FanDuel. I want to let you know that FanDuel is the number one sports book in America. Guys, listen up. Man, I've been trying to figure out why people don't want to go to FanDuel. Why have you gone to FanDuel just yet? Like, what are you doing with your lives? For all the new customers, for the people who have been 
just middling around, not trying to figure out how to get to this thing and, and, and take advantage of these great deals that FanDuel has going on right now. For new customers, $150 in bonus bets it, with any winning $5 money line bet. Let me tell you that again. $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Guys, if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action right now. I'm telling you, those bonus bets that you win, you can get, you can use that money to bet on the spreads, player props, over-unders, and much, much more. So I'm telling you guys, FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel.com slash locked on is the place you need to go to. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. L O C K E D O N and kick off the NFL season because FanDuel is the official sports book betting partner of the NFL. Now, Brent, like I really feel like you put on your Swami hat last week. We were talking about who's next and who needs to step up. And I just absolutely loved it. I was sitting there watching the game and I was looking at Lad McConkey go off and I was looking at Dominic Love and I was like, oh, I know Brent just kind of just smoothing over his brow right now. I was just, <laughs> but, you know, but I think that we know that the, the Bulldogs got a very, very big time matchup coming up against uh, Missouri, Mizzou. Who do you feel? Like that's that player with it can be a combo as well. You know, you can go back to back weeks with the com- the player combo. But who do you feel needs to step up as they get ready to go against Mizzou between the hedges? It is a combo because it's one position specifically, and there's two of them: offensive tackle, Ernest Green, mm-hmm. and then Xavier Truss and or Marius Mims if he happens to play, but likely likely Truss. Absolutely, yeah. Missouri has legit edge ru- edge rushers: Darius Robinson, Johnny Walker. Both already have 20 plus pressures, five sacks already, like multi, five, I think five out of eight games for both of them where they've had at least three pressures in a sack. So, like, these guys are going to bring edge pressure. Missouri blitzes as much, if not more, than any team in the SEC. Offensive tackles. And, and by the way, Ernest Green was not good against Florida. You, like, Parson Breck wasn't pressure, but it was more a function of Beck being able to move and then also get rid of the football quickly. A lot of losses for him this past weekend against Florida and, and Princely, number one. Like that, that can't happen against Missouri because they're too good elsewhere, uh, especially at corner. Uh, so, like those two guys for me are the ones that big time have to step up. Yeah, I, I'm with you because, like, it seems like Mizzou has, like, they have like a a little two a little uh, toy box that they go to and go get edge rushers because those guys have sent so many cats to the NFL. It's just absolutely ridiculous from Alden Smith and those guys. You know, it just seems like those guys have, they know where to go to go get those guys. And I think that the offensive line is going to, it's going to be a big test for those guys because sometimes like, you know, I think they were blitzing at a 35% clip, almost 36%, you know, uh, Mizzou that is. Uh, on, on defensively, so and they're pre- very a very good team in the red zone um, as, as well. So those are some of the things that I feel like they need to take advantage of for sure. I, I think for me, when you think about like t- different type of players or, or, or groups that need to kind of step up, I I, I, guess, I think we, like we mentioned in the last in the last last segment, it has to be that defense. I think the defense as a whole. And that back end, that's that secondary. I think those guys need to, they're going to have to be on point because what Luther Burden is bringing to the table, that dude off in the slot, Tyke Smith is going to have to have a game of his life yeah. if he wants to put himself in the conversation of being able to go to that next level, which I believe what is the reason why he stay, stayed in college and, and stuck around for a little while. So, yeah, I think Luther Burden is going to be a problem for He's this legit. defense. Yeah, yeah. He's, legit. He's one of the best two or three receivers in the country. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. With what sixty-one catches for uh, to the tune of like nine hundred something yards already. <laughs> exactly, that is absolutely ridiculous. As we're what eight games into the season, so that is they uh, they understand. I think they uh, they understand what what they need to do in order to be able to to get this get a win in this game. Now, also, I want to kind of go back to what we what we kind of talked about on the football party pretty much since we started, as far as the Georgia slow start. Now, we saw what happened in that first drive defensively against the Florida Gators, but we, we saw that, you know, that offense for Georgia was, was, was clicking from the, from pretty much from the start. 
Do you think this is the type of game that the dogs will end up being, will get up for, being that they, this is for the control in the SEC East? Do you feel like the dogs will be more than ready to oh, yeah. get off to a good start in this one? 100%. And I think it's on the offense. Like, if you think yeah. about the game last year yep. against Missouri, the first, I think, five possessions were three three and outs and two fumbles. Like they didn't score to the sixth possession last year against Missouri. You can't have that happen uh, in this game. You can't ask your defense to stop them for an, you know, a quarter and a half. Like Missouri is going to score a little bit. Yeah. Uh, they have, they're, yeah. Their quarterback's playing too well. Uh, the only way I think they don't score is if they're consistently in third and long, but they do a good job uh, of sort of staying out of third and long. But yeah, you, it's, they're going to be a, they're going to be ready to go uh, at home. I almost think from a Vegas, like you've seen the Vegas line, like being the 16 and a half, 17 range, 14, you know, anywhere in that range. It's almost like a seven point bump, I think, for for Georgia being at home. 39, yeah. 39 and one, I think, uh, in the last three or four years uh, at home, four years at home. Yeah, man, this is, I don't, there are certain games like, the games coming in where everybody in the country was saying, okay, all right, is Georgia the real deal? Because, you know, like we understand what the schedule is and, and what is what it has been for them this year. Like that Kentucky game, boom, they came out and just kicked Kentucky butt all up and down the field. And I think this is one of those games where we can tag. This is gonna, probably going to be like the Kentucky game. They say, hey, you know what? We're going to show people who we are. And I think it started with this Florida game and, and – and I think they're going to – I think we're not have any issues about saying after this game is over with, regardless of the result, uh, Georgia will, will came prepared and they, they got off to a really good start. Last one before we get out of here. I got to ask you this. College football playoff rankings come out. Is Georgia number one? I don't think they will be. Wow. So who, got, who you got for number one? Uh, I mean, I could see it being Florida State. Uh, I could mm -hmm. see it being Washington. Like one of those two teams, because of the big – when they've had over win, yeah. another top 10 team uh, or Florida State's being LSU. Uh, but yeah, I think it's one of those two. I could see it, I could see it being like Washington, Michigan at two, uh, FSU three, Georgia four, or Florida State one, Michigan two, Washington. Like, I think, I think Georgia's going to be right around like third or fourth. Okay. All right. That's fair. I mean, because I think – I can't remember the exact number, but I think that the team that normally is ranked number one, uh, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure if, no quote me on this, I'm not sure if they've ever won the champions, the national championship or, or something to that effect. But, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting how that kind of works. It is like, who's the number one when they first come out, because we all know the season has to play itself out. The strength of schedule is right now for them is not high. And then you add the next two weeks where you got a top 15 team, and then potential like Ole Miss, they beat if they beat A and M, uh, they're going to be uh, in the top ten, likely right around ten nine. Like that might be a two versus nine matchup, one versus yeah, who knows. But yeah, it'll, it'll work itself out. Just win, yeah. Just win, baby. Gonna, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's all you got to do because we we know that Kirby Smart and company are going to be ready to roll. We thank you for rolling with. And Atlanta Football Party and making it your first listener today. Why don't you go ahead and check out Locked On Sports Atlanta and make that your second listener today? We really appreciate you guys. We are free and available wherever you download your podcast, wherever you download your podcast. Make sure you leave us a five star review. Really appreciate that from you in advance. We're back at it on Friday with the Locked On Sports Atlanta Party is going down. So make sure you guys check that out. And remember, if you don't do anything else in life, make sure you show somebody some love. I appreciate you. Thanks, Brent. And we'll see you next week. Good.